Good morning, Transformers. How are you? This is Anne Nyambura bringing you the devotional for today. And I'd like to just encourage you this morning. I'll just to encourage you that you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. I don't know where you're listening from. I don't know what you're going through right now. But I'd just like to encourage you by the fact that and the virtue of the fact that you are listening to this uh, devotion, you are blessed. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, that blessed is he who hears the word of these prophecies, who reads the words of these prophecies and keep that which is written in it. So by the fact that you're listening and watching this devotion, you're blessed. Ignore what you're going through right now. I don't know what's happening in your life. Um, again, Jesus told us that in this world, you will go through trouble. Yeah, trouble is always with us. But take heart because you are blessed. And Jesus said that you will go through trouble, but he has overcome. So take heart. Take heart you're blessed. Take heart that you have overcome. So this morning, we are going to look at um, a topic that is, uh, I've titled, More Valuable Than Gold or Silver. More Valuable Than Gold or Silver. And before we start, I would like us to pray. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we come before you. We thank you for the word that you've prepared for us. And you've told us that we are blessed for hearing and for reading the words of this prophecy. So we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would speak to us and come to us to a, from a place of blessedness, that we would understand that we are blessed by the word that you've given us this morning. Give us revelation, give us insight. Lord, change our lives today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe it. Amen. So, as I said, we are talking about, um, uh, we, are, we are studying a topic on what's more valuable than gold or silver. And now, just in the context of the topic, um, I wanted us to look at the value of gold, yeah? Today, I checked the value of gold in the morning, and one gram, uh, the 24 carat gram of gold, was going to um, an amount of close to 7,000 Kenya shillings. So you can see that um, gold is pretty valuable. And just to make you understand, the size of a gram is like a pinch of salt, yeah? A pinch of salt. Or the like weight of a thumbtack. You know the thumbtacks we used to put on the walls, to post things on the walls? Yes, that's the weight of a gram of gold. So definitely gold is very, very valuable. And it's actually used as a status symbol. You know, um, rich people use them to, you know, like uh, wear them as jewelry, wear them as necklaces, you know, have them as wedding rings, etc. Et, et. And the reason why it's very valuable is because it's been tried and tested. It's been there from the past. From the time even the Bible was written, the Bible, I mean, the gold was there, it was valuable, it was, um, you know, held in high esteem. At the same time, gold is a measure of value, you know. You can be able to tell um, how valuable something is based on, on, on gold. At the same time, because it is scarce and it is difficult to mine, gold becomes very, very valuable. And it is believed that just as gold was there in the past and used as a store of value, a measure of wealth, it will continue to be used even in the future. So now we are asking ourselves, based on that context, what then can we say is more valuable than gold or silver? Now, um, I want us to answer that question by reading Proverbs chapter 3, verse 14. And the Bible says, Wisdom is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. I'll read again. Wisdom is more valuable than silver and yields better returns than gold. So there we have it. What's more valuable than gold, what's more valuable than silver is wisdom, according to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 14. And now, on, in the same context, I want us to look at two parables that talk to us about wisdom. And the first is found in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. And the Bible says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. 25, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the weeds grew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. 
27, the rain came down, the streams arose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So, I see two uh, words here that we are using today. There's a, there's a foolish man, so the word foolish, and there's a wise man, yeah? And the foolish man built his house on the rock. So when the rains came and the streams rose and the winds blew, the house did not fall. But the other one who built his house on the sand, when the winds came and the, and the rains fell, this house fell with a crash. So there's a foolish man and there's a wise man. Again, Jesus gives another parable of uh, women who are found to be wise and others who are found to be foolish. And we find that parable in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, 1 to 13. And I will read again. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five, five of them were foolish and five were wise. Again, we encounter the word foolish and um, the opposite of foolish is wise. So you're either foolish or wise. Number three, the foolish one took, took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Four, the wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. So now the foolish ones, the Bible says, they took oil in jars along with their lamps. And the, bread, and, and the foolish ones did not. And five, the bridegroom was a long time in coming and the oil became drowsy and fell asleep. Six, um, at midnight, the cry uh, rang out. Here's a bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. Nine, no, they replied, there may not be enough for us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Ten, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready with him um, to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Eleven, later the others came also and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. Twelve, but he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. So in those two parables, Jesus talks about uh, two kinds of people, the wise people and the foolish people. And we talk about wisdom. We're reminded um, from the book of 1 Kings chapter 3 about Solomon. And we all know that Solomon was the wisest of kings. And um, when he made the sacrifice, the big sacrifice where he sacrificed a thousand animals, the Lord asked him, what can I do for him? It always overwhelms me at the kind of sacrifice that Solomon gave. It was above and beyond your normal sacrifice. And so the Lord asked him, what can I do for you? And Solomon, being young and having just become a king, he asked for wisdom, only wisdom. I would like to, uh, to just challenge you or ask you a question. If the Lord asked, what can I do for you today, dear viewer, what would you say? Solomon answered that he only wanted wisdom. And he realized that he needed wisdom because he needed to govern the people of Israel. So now we've seen um, wisdom in many contexts. And we've also seen that King Solomon asked for wisdom. So what does the Bible say about wisdom? I'll read some texts and then we can see a little more of what the Bible says about wisdom. So um, the first text I'll read is from the book of Proverbs chapter 8, 22. 23 and 27 and in 22 the, the bible says the lord brought me forth from the first of his works before his deeds of old here the bible is talking about wisdom so the lord brought forth wisdom as the first of his works before his deeds of old basically that's what, what he's saying is that um wisdom came before even the foundation of the earth was laid it was the first to be made, you know. And then 23, I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be. Yeah, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizons of the face of the deep. Yeah, so we see that wisdom came before everything else was made. Yeah, in Proverbs 3, 19 to 20, the Bible says again, by wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. 20. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided and the clouds let drop the dew. So basically what we are saying is that 
the Lord used wisdom to lay the foundations of the earth and understanding to set the heavens in place. And it challenged me when I read this, I was, and, and I was challenged to think that if the Lord had to use wisdom to lay the foundations of the earth, understanding to set the heavens in place, how about me? a mortal man, how about me? How much more do I need wisdom for my everyday operations? Now, um, in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is referred to a lot as she. Yeah, it given, it's given the pronoun she. Um, that's very encouraging, encouraging for the ladies. <laughs> yeah, um, but further to this, there are also four things um, on earth that the Bible talks about that are small, yet are very, very wise. Maybe it's a challenge to us. And the scripture is found in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24. And again, I will read. 25, ants are creatures of little strength. Yeah, the ants. We know the ants. Yet they store up their food in the summer. Yeah, 26, hyraxes are creatures of little power. Yet they make their homes in the crowds. 27, locusts have no king yet they advance together in runs 28 a lizard can be caught in the hand yet it is found in the king's palaces so these are four very small animals that the bible talks about that are very very wise yeah the ants we know the size of the ants and the ants um the bible talks about that in the book of Proverbs again about how they know how to uh, collect their food in the summer so that in the winter they have something to eat and that's wisdom you know you know the seasons and you work according to the seasons hyraxes hyraxes are small herbivorous animals they're found in africa and in asia and in the arabia arabia sorry and the bible talks about how they build their their houses in the crags those are uh, rocky outcrops and you know that building a house on a rocky place is hard so the Lord talks about hyraxes as being very wise. And now the locusts. The Bible says that they have no king, yet they advance in yet they advance in in, 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 in drones. Yeah? There are very many when they advance. And we also have seen the, the issue about locusts. When they came to the country um, just the other day, you know, it was headline news. Because when they come to a place, when they invade an area, they will make sure that they finish the, the food, everything that is green, in a short period of time. And they do this without having a leader. Yeah, and then a lizard, which the Bible says is, can be caught in their hand, yet it is found in the king's palaces. So we have four animals that the Bible mentions that, you know, that are very uh, small, yet they are very wise. Maybe it's a challenge to us. Yeah, the animals that are wise, you know, um, how much more do we need wisdom also? Yeah, and then I'd click us now to define um, wisdom using the dictionary. And wisdom is referred to the, the synonyms of wisdom according to the dictionary are knowledge, perception, understanding, insight, and perception. Yeah, I'll go again. The synonyms of knowledge, according to the dictionary, are knowledge. The synonyms of wisdom are knowledge, perception, understanding, insight, and, um, and, and perception again. So that's how the dictionary de de defines, um, uh, defines wisdom. So, um, be, and, and it's correct. Even in the biblical context, that is correct. Wisdom can be referred like that. However, there's a bigger perspective that can be seen in the book of James chapter 3 verse 17 that will make us notice the difference between uh, the spiritual wisdom and the earthly wisdom that's found in the book of James chapter 3 verse 17 and the Bible says but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere so basically what the Bible is saying is that you can have perception, you can have knowledge, you can have all of these things, but you're not considerate, you're not submissive, you're not peace-loving, and you're not full of mercy or good fruit. That's the difference between the worldly wisdom and the spiritual or biblical vision. So um, we've come to the end of today's um, part of what's the greatest treasure. 
yeah and we've seen that number one that wisdom was made before the foundations of the earth yeah and we've been challenged by the bible uh, about four animals that are very very wise the ant the hyrax the locust and the lizard all of them very wise operating in wisdom in the way that they live in their very very own lives we also looked at the parables that mention about wisdom are uh, two of them the wise and the foolish builder and also we've also looked at the five i mean at the ten virgins yeah and so tomorrow we'll be looking at uh, we'll be answering trying to answer the question are you a wise man or a wise woman are you a wise man or a wise woman and i'd like to bring this to a close and i hope to see you tomorrow ready to get those answers uh, in jesus name so let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you thank you for uh, introducing us into the topic of wisdom lord god you tell us to search for wisdom uh, more than gold more than silver we pray that at the end of this week we'll be um, moved to search for wisdom like the way you mentioned it in the Bible. So Lord, we welcome your presence, we welcome your insight, we welcome your revelation in this. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.